On December 15, 1791, the Bill of Rights was ratified, laying out the basic rights of the American people. The Second Amendment, introduced by James Madison, states that a well-regulated militia, being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms, shall not be infringed. This has protected our right to own firearms for over 200 years, allowing people to buy and own firearms for a variety of purposes. I would much rather have a form, of, some form of protection on me, whether I'm at home or traveling by myself, I would just rather have it knowing I'm safe. Okay, so my mom has a lot, and I'm not a huge fan of the size, but knowing it would be a form of protection, I'll probably get one of those, and I would just have to take some extra measures knowing how to handle it and use it. Mostly just my parents not being home as much, and the fact that I'm about to graduate college and move somewhere that I'm not going to be as familiar with the area. Um, I don't have one right now, but I do plan on getting one just because, like I said earlier, when I'm moving away and I'll be alone, I would like to have one just in case. And I mean, I know in the state of South Carolina, you don't have to have a CWP to carry a gun in your glove compartment, but just as like an extra precaution, I would probably get one. No matter the reason for wanting to purchase a firearm, there are regulations that people must follow and processes that they must go through to legally own one. Well, we've had very good training officers with our department that prepared us before we went to the academy. And then once at the academy, again, safety was of the utmost and paramount when you have that many people on the line shooting. So uh, safety was just reiterated over and over. And of course, then we were to demonstrate our proficiency or our ability to shoot accurately um, as a part of our academy training. Well, as an NRA instructor, there are three basic rules. Number one, always keep a gun pointed in a safe direction. Always keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to shoot. And last but not least, always keep the gun unloaded until you're ready to shoot it. Well, first off, I don't think guns are dangerous. Um, I would argue if you can peel an apple and if you can drive a car, then you have the faculties by which you can shoot a gun. To say that guns are unsafe is like to say knives are unsafe and cars are unsafe. Um, do people become comfortable and complacent? And I think that would lend toward the ones who have a lot of training. Um, yes, it is something that you have to give your full attention to. I do believe that people with insufficient training, they don't know that they don't know and they make mistakes and sometimes it's deadly. I also believe that there are a lot of people who are well trained and because they miss one step, because of being in a hurry or just being comfortable in that situation, I do believe that things can happen and again some of those can be deadly. Well, I believe concealed carry is, is a very personal issue. Um, I, I know there is a, a variety of ways that people carry. Um, I think the most important thing is, is that concealed carry is just that. It, it is concealed and no one should know. Um, I, I believe it's kind of like a spare tire in the car. Everybody has one but nobody wants to use it. Um, so I guess I, I believe being well trained, well practiced, well educated on the expectations of concealed carry, I think that makes you safe and it keeps everyone else safe. A concealed weapons permit, or CWP, is a permit that allows people to carry weapons on their persons, especially handguns, which they could otherwise easily conceal in their clothes. Some of the requirements to obtain a CWP license are, you must live in the state where you are seeking to obtain the license. You must meet the minimum age requirement of the state jurisdiction. You must submit fingerprints to a national database. You must pass either an instant or comprehensive background check, depending on the situation. You must attend a certified firearm safety class and pass an exam demonstrating your proficiency with the weapon. Lastly, you must pay a fee. Well, one of the first questions I always like to ask somebody is what exactly are you wanting the gun to do for you? Are you wanting it for a fun activity? Are you wanting it for self-defense? Are you wanting it for hunting? So there's a broad range of activities that a firearm can be used for. 
on the record side of things, what we do is we actually fill out a form called a 4473, and it asks a bunch of questions. Uh, this is what the form looks like, and uh, obviously you have to state your name and your address. But then it also asks some personal information, and you have to answer if, if you are a felon, if you've ever been convicted of a felony, if you've ever done anything. Then it gets down into the legalities of citizenship. Are you a U.S. citizen? Are you an alien here in the United States? Or after all that is answered, we actually submit all the information to the FBI, and the FBI actually does a background check. The government says that if you've been approved to carry, then you are approved to purchase, so it makes the process a lot easier. If you don't have a concealed weapons permit, then we have to do everything either online or via a cell phone. South Carolina has had some changes in the past. Believe it or not, South Carolina has uh, historically been one of the stricter states for firearms. In fact, there were only seven states that had some laws having to do with melting point issues, which was a, a law fairly recently in the last 10 years that was changed. And so what that meant was any gun that had a melting point, I believe it was under 760 degrees, was not allowed to be sold by a dealer in South Carolina. So that eliminated a lot of the cheaper guns, guns that range anywhere from 100 to 150 bucks. Now, if, if you were an individual and you had moved from another state and already owned one, that was not, you know, an illegal purchase to have, but it's just a dealer was, on a lot, you know, not allowed to sell it. Uh, the main thing is, I feel like for the most part, the media continually makes firearm ownership a negative side of things, and they always try to bring out the bad side of firearm ownership. But I do highly recommend everyone taking safety classes, becoming familiar with firearms, and then you'll, then you'll feel much safer when you are around them. We've sold a lot of uh, firearms to people who've never owned a gun before. And once they went through a class, a safety class, they became a lot more familiar with it than they realized that it was just a tool that if they treated it carefully and safely, then it would be, you know, a good purchase. But this only applies to buying a firearm in the state of South Carolina. The process is similar from state to state, but specific laws can differ. States like New York, California, and Illinois are known for having stricter laws. For example, New York and California have a magazine limit on handguns of 10, and all three states require you to get a CWP from their state specifically. For some of these stricter states, the amount of total registered guns are as follows. California with 344,622 registered guns, New York, 76,207 registered guns, and Illinois, 146,487 registered firearms. While states like South Carolina, Texas, and Alabama have more lenient laws on firearms. Well, first of all, you have to make sure you know all the laws, and they change a good bit to keep up with it. And when we changed over the county, I mean the state, and uh, enhanced some laws, it's worked pretty well. I've really got to be 18 or older, and then sometimes, and this is just South Carolina, and sometimes 21 older. But we've had this great success of our uh, gun people all across the state and doing what they're supposed to. Uh, sheriff's office, the jail, the th obvious things to you, uh, and also the main thing before you go in, make sure that it is posted where you can't bring in. If it's posted, don't go in. And it's, it's just like everything else. If somebody owns something and or they want to keep a gun out, that's fine also. But really, people are good at letting you know if they can come in uh, into the building, into the hospital, things like that. It'll be posted. Take a few seconds, look around, and make sure the signage is there. I think people who don't know or don't uh, work with them or even try to learn them, that's where we have our biggest problems that said all the good. And also, again, we're back in South Carolina and we're great. People are 99% 99, 99 for guns and understand how they protect themselves and their families. And I think that's uh, most of the times what you see people inflating stuff, making stuff up about guns. We just really don't see it here in South Carolina. Usually it's a felony, and that may be a felony here at our local level, here in our courts, or federal. And if we have a lot of guns 
with some, uh, some type of, we've made a raid or something like that. We work with the feds and running through these guns, seeing if they were stole, see if they're linked to any other crimes. And uh, the feds are in our area are real good about working with us on gun and gun uh, deception of people trying to do. And we've got a great team and they, and most of our feds and our good guys, they're gun people too. Well, there should be no, if your gun is brought out, it should, it should be for you're going to use it at that exact time. There's no use waving a, a gun or anything else and, and, and getting it going higher than it should. There's really a few times that you would want to flash a gun, but it's very, very rare. When you have your gun, you need your should be out because you have to use it at that time. I would like to say keep doing what we're doing. Uh, in South Carolina at least, is uh, we have great people. We have people who are doing very well on what they should do with guns. They take care of themselves, they practice, they keep up on our laws and things like that. And our gun people around this area are uh, just great to have. Neither South Carolina, Texas, nor Alabama have handgun magazine restrictions. While South Carolina honors CWPs from 25 states, Texas honors 44, and Alabama honors 48. The total amount of registered guns in these states are as follows. South Carolina has 105,601 registered firearms. Texas has 588,696 registered firearms, and Alabama has 161,641 right, registered firearms. Before you purchase a firearm, you should research your state's specific laws to know what you can and cannot do as laws can affect them with what firearms you can own, how old you must be to own specific firearms, where you can take your firearm, and how you can modify your firearm. Proper handling, obviously. Um, you know, if you buy a gun, you don't know how to use it or anything, that's a great opportunity for an accident to happen. And so understanding how to properly handle it, um, making sure that when you're doing certain, like cleaning it, you don't want to clean it if there's ammunition in the, in the gun. You don't want to um, flag people pointing it in that general direction. Um, proper storage is a big thing, especially if you're a family, if you've got kids, you want to make sure it's, it's locked, it's restrained, it's out of reach. Um, Things like that, just kind of being overboard safe with it is always the best way to way to go. There's a lot more stipulation than I think a lot of people let on, um, in my opinion, and I was kind of one of those people before I started working here. Um, people often think that a lot of times it's too easy, when in reality there's a lot of checks and balances that come in before purchasing a firearm, like you can't buy handguns out of state. There's a little lengthier process of getting it transferred and filling out paperwork in your home state. Um, age restrictions, those kind of things, um, citizenship, criminal records, all these things kind of come into play when you're purchasing a gun. And so a lot of times people will come in before they even start looking for a gun, they're like, look, this is on my record. Do you think I'm gonna be able to buy it? And it will tell them straight up, yes or no. Another thing is that um, gun stores have a, uh, have a right to deny sale. So for some, even if your background check is cleared, if for some reason we think that there's a reason that you should not be purchasing a fire on that day, um, then we're gonna say no, yeah. Laws relating to firearms commonly change and can be tricky to navigate, so you might want to check out websites like nra.org. Of course, one of the most important ways to avoid breaking firearm laws is to understand and know the gun laws in your state and every state that you plan on visiting because gun laws vary from state to state. Remember, as the great Sun Tzu once said in his book, The Art of War, stay strapped or get clapped.